Hello church, welcome to worship today. I'm glad you're here. As you know, we have been talking a lot more recently about the reintegration plan and about our fall, our fall plans. Um, as we've learned more about what school systems are going to do and we've watched the, the numbers. So uh, if you have not received a, a special August mailing, we called it the, the Bethel Fall Ministry Launch Guide. Uh, so if you did not receive that, uh, please let me know or um, I'll include a link in the, in the description below. I'm coming to you today from our prayer labyrinth. This is a gift to the congregation from Chencho Orta. He did it as part of his Eagle Scout project a few years ago. Tremendous gift to the congregation and to the community. If you haven't been to this side of the property or if you haven't been out to see the prayer labyrinth, I invite you to do so. It's a great place to pray, to do a, a little prayer walk as you examine your life, as you examine your relationship with God and your neighbor. A fantastic gift. You see, the congregation, all congregations, are built on the, the love and the gifts of its people. Today, sadly, we say goodbye to Craig and Wynn Leitner. We, we celebrate with them as well because this is a, uh, their, their move to Pennsylvania will be a wonderful next chapter for them. Uh, but today also we celebrate with them because it's their 45th wedding anniversary. So many things for us to celebrate and look forward to. And so let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Welcome to worship from the Lightners. We're glad you're here worshiping with us. We come to worship today with a whole lot of emotions. Today is our last day to worship with you at Bethel before our retirement move to Pennsylvania. We're looking forward to our new adventures, but we really loved being so involved at Bethel. It's hard leaving without being able to hug all of you and see you face to face. It's amazing to think that we've been at Bethel for almost 18 years. Some of the things we have really enjoyed being a part of are the joyful, dedicated team of the Altar Guild, the sweet, most of the time sounding voices of the choir, the faithful worship and music ministry team members, a Sunday school teacher, crew, building and grounds, communion assistant, worship assistant, confirmation mentor, and just all around service to the church and our Lord. Thank you for being a part of us as we are a part of you. So let us prepare for worship. If you haven't already, set up a place for worship in your home with a candle. During the hymn, we'll light our candles reminding us that the light of Christ is always with us wherever we are. If you have a prayer request, you can call or text to the number on your screen. Then, at about 1035, join us for coffee hour on Zoom. The link is on our website. God bless each and every one of you as we begin our worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. 
By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all, and also with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. A reading from the 51st chapter of Isaiah. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving in the voice of song. Listen to me, my people. 
and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the people. The coastlands wait for me and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. A reading from the 12th chapter of Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all of the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said to him, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, we have several phrases that we use to say that a person is like someone else, especially like a parent. You're a chip off the old block. You are cut from the same cloth. Well, the Old Testament has a phrase for this as well. And we hear it today in the reading from Isaiah. Isaiah says, look to the rock from which you were hewn. May sound like a strange way to put that, but uh, if you look at any kind of a sculpture, um, for example, um, in, in Ethiopia, there are 11 stone churches. These are monoliths. So they are cut from one stone uh, where, they, where they stood. Um, really amazing structures. And, and so you, you find that uh, you, whoever the sculptors were, whoever built these churches, they had some vision in mind for what they wanted to do, but then they, they started dirt, uh, digging, they started working. So from that rock, they formed a church. We also hear about St. Peter 
St. Peter, uh, you know, he makes his great confession we hear in the gospel reading today. His great confession is in response to Jesus as he asks, well, who do people say that I am? And, pe and the disciples gave him all sorts of answers, prophets and all these. Uh, but then Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? Well, it's really quite fascinating that Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? Because I think it's, there is something very important about us confessing with our own lips. What is it that we believe? Our, our beliefs, our, uh, our, our personalities, our values, they don't just appear. Look at all the people who formed you. Where did you get your interest in music, your ability to sing? Where did you get your interest in dinosaurs or flying or trains? Whatever your interests are, um, interests in business or, uh, or, or painting, we get our interests from somewhere. We were cut from the cloth of someone else. People who have gone before us, likely our parents, but could be other people as well who have mentored us and helped to mold us to become who we are. We all come from somewhere. Who helped you to become who you are? Churches are very much the same way. Bethel um, didn't just appear one day. We're 131 years old. Back in 1889 is when, uh, when we were chartered as a congregation. But even before that, people were worshiping as Bethel. People were coming together as, as men and women, children, people of God, wanting to worship, to study the Bible, to learn better how to follow Jesus. And, and from that emerged a church. And my, my grandfather, he's one of the people that formed me, of course. My grandfather used to say, that we occupy positions for a season. Now, that may be a job, that may be, um, uh, that, that may be a relationship. We're in things for a season. So, you know, when, when uh, people would come to Bethel in those early days, they had no idea who you and I were. They had no idea that uh, Bethel would have started on the corners of Lee and Grant Avenue in Old Town Manassas. They had no idea that we would, in 1970, move to our current location. They had no idea that I would be the pastor at this time. They had no idea who all of you would be that are part of this congregation. As you know, we began this, this COVID time, the pandemic time, really emphasizing the, the idea of be church. Of course, we love our church building and that building has served us very well. We have used that building to reach out and to do God's work in so many different ways. But the church building is not the church. That's you and I. Those early people who became part of Bethel, they set in motion the, the decisions, the, 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 the ways that we would become church. They, they became our DNA and they passed that along from generation to generation so that what Bethel is now is from them. The, the Holy Spirit brought people into the life of the church and the Holy Spirit brought you into the life of Bethel in one way, shape, or, or another. You may be a member of, of Bethel. You may be uh, watching this from somewhere far away. But for now, you are part of Bethel. You are part of building on that DNA. You are part of making that proclamation that Peter made that Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of God, the Savior. 
And so upon that foundation, upon that rock, Christ builds his church. Now, it's not the literal out of a rock like uh, they did in Ethiopia, but it's the rock of the foundation of faith. What a gift that is that God's given to us. So you and I no longer are just individuals, as Paul says in the Romans reading today. You and I are individual members, but we are part of one another. We are part of the body of Christ. So we give thanks today for all of the people who have gone before us and formed us and who we are as individuals. But today we also give thanks for all of those who have gone before us, most of whom we don't know and have formed us as Bethel. As many of you know, Pastor Gene Copenhaver uh, was one of our former pastors. He served from 1993 to, to 2000. And he gave himself, he and his wife Marty gave themselves to this ministry. They were part of the decisions and part of forming Bethel for who we would become today. Pastor Copenhaver died last week and we give thanks for his life, we give thanks for his ministry, and we, we pray for his wife Marty and their family and all who mourn them. Gene uh, was a, a campus pastor and touched the lives of many young people that way, but also touched the, many, the lives of many young people in our congregation. We give thanks today for the, the, the lives and ministry of Wynn and Craig Leitner as Today they go, uh, they, they, this is their last Sunday with us as they uh, make their transition to Pennsylvania. You recall, you know, just a few weeks ago that Larry and Nancy Cooper, they also made their transition to Michigan. All of these people have given of themselves. These and many, many others have have taught Sunday school and worked in music programs and youth programs and, and have, have studied the Bible, have participated in adult classes, have worshiped, have been on altar guilt, and I can go on and on and on. Without the people of this church, there would be no ministry. There would be a mission of Christ. And some of you may recall that uh, during my doctoral work, I came across this phrase that I really love, that God has a mission and God's mission has a church. Our job is to live out his mission and to carry that on. So our, our question as we end the sermon today is first to give thanks and to think about those people in your life and in your faith development that made you who you are, who helped you develop as a, as a person of faith. But then we turn and we look forward. Where do we go from here? Who are the generations of Bethel Lutheran Church? Who are the people in the future that we don't even know yet? that we are making decisions for, that we are continuing the DNA, that we are continuing to build upon the foundation of faith, build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Who are those people that we are providing for and sending this church forward for? Because the church, yes, it does exist to feed and nurture us, but so much more. The church exists to feed and nurture our community, to feed and nurture uh, people in the future, to, to, to prepare a, a, a church and a faith life for, for young children and young adults as they find their own place in this church, as they make the, the, the faith part of themselves. So church, let's be church as we look forward in hope to what God will continue to do. In the name of Jesus, amen. My life flows on in endless song. 
cup of earth's lamentation. I hear the sweet, the far off hymn that hears a new creation. Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ring. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? For through my joys and comforts I, the Lord my Savior liveth, for through the darkness gather round. Songs in the night he giveth, no storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that refuge clinging, since Christ is Lord. Of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? I lift my eyes, the cloud grows through. I see the blue of the earth, and day by day this path will smooth. Since Christ I learned to love it, the peace of Christ makes fresh my heart. A fountain there. Spring, all things are mine since I am His. How can I keep from singing? 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 From singing. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs, that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislatures, magistrates, mayors, and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved, in trouble or adversity, or sick in, or in need of care. Today we pray for those on our prayer list. Howard and Renate, Tim, Cheryl, Lucille, Jane, Bob C, Rod D, Erna G, Connie, Clarence, Stacy, Josh, Cliff and Jean, Eileen, Dutch, Maria, Howard, and all those on Bethel's prayer list and those we name in the silence of our hearts. so that all may experience your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us into this community of Bethel, in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we are hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved Pastor Jean Copenhaver. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Let us now join together and proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we conclude our worship today, I invite you to raise your hands in blessing as we bless and send Wynne and Craig on the next journey of their lives. Please read or say with me the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we are sent out into this world, called as children of God, cut from the rock, or hewn from the rock of our Lord, but also of all of those who have gone before us, who have taught and enlightened us in the faith, who have modeled for us. Go, you are sent to be God's hands, feet, voice, and heart in the world. In the name of Jesus, amen.